Hello class. We're back again for another session on our beach scene and today I wanted to begin by talking to you about a script, a liner, or rigor brush. They're all the same and what they indicate are long bristle brushes used for making fine lines and I have several here. Um, these are both uh, Robert Simmons liner brushes and these are zero, the number on them, and those are good for fine lines of course. And we also have some that are size one. Uh, these are one stroke brushes. Okay, and this one is another Robert Simmons, which is also a number one. These are thicker brushes, and they work very well, depending on your project. Now, the one that I'm going to be using today is an extra long hair script brush. It is a zero as well, but you can see how fine the lines are. And on these sea oats, which is going to be our primary collection of sea oats, um, we may not need anything quite this fine or this long, but I'm going to begin with that. Let me also suggest to you that once you get your paint mixed up, which in this case I'm using Prussian blue, cadmium yellow light, and or cadmium yellow medium and that just really depends and I'm going to be putting a touch of red in it to um, to gray it down a bit but um, here is where we're going um, this is our model painting we're going to be working on these sea oats and sea grasses today and the preliminary work is going to be just doing the grasses themselves. I'll be putting in the actual sea oats later. But I have some other sea oats over here on this side. And I haven't decided yet what we're going to do on this painting. But notice all the grasses that we have to cover on this painting. But I'm primarily interested today on getting started on the sea oats. That's what we will be working on in class. So um, I'm going to speed this up slightly and give you a little musical background while I do this, but let me suggest once you get your paint all mixed up and you're going to thin it out with either turpentine or the liquid medium. Um, and you'll just have to try to see which one works best for you. And I would take a piece of white paper and it would be best if you use one of your palette pad, pads that are waxed surfaces and just practice with your brush and see which one is going to work the best for you because you really need to be very fluid in putting these marks down. So let's get started. really requires uh, very fluid paint but um, if you are loose with your brush you'll get much better results because you don't want thick clumpy grasses and notice I'm doing different directions. In this case they're all going to be leaning slightly to the right as if the breeze is slightly blowing to the right. But that's where I'm going to go with this.
Okay, I've zoomed in a bit so that you could see what I was up to. What I did in the beginning was to make a lot of seagrass and some of the seagrasses I made a little bit higher anticipating there being the actual sea oats and I have changed now from my very long liner brush to one of these zero brushes. Now I have also lightened my color from green to uh, a little bit more of a gold by adding a little more cadmium yellow medium to my previous mixture and this is another case in which you need plenty of turpentine in your brush but it's also a time when you need to measure how much is enough because if you get too much it will um, sort of liquefy on your canvas and make rather ugly sea oats and one thing that you need to know about sea oats is that the way they grow is that at the very top they come out um, and they look a little shorter and then they get longer as each part of the stem actually um, grows further down the, the stem and I'll be coming back to do some highlights and some little shadows later but for now I'm trying to establish which ones of these are going to be sea oats and you can always go back later and extend some of these which I may in this case come on up here with this and I've used enough turpentine with my thin liner brush that um, I can do that, you know, and come back and make them a little, a little wispier, or in this case, to have these heads with the actual sea oats on them. And I have a photograph of up close sea oats so that you can see where I'm going. But these don't have to look exactly like that photograph. Uh, for one thing, the photograph is taken much later in the year when the sea oats are very dried out. So um, let's look now at that photograph and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to go back and work on these and speed up the film again. Okay, um, here is a photograph of a whole clump of sea oats. This is much later in the year when they've begun to dry out more. Um, I want ours to be somewhere between uh, green and this color, but I wanted you to see how they actually grow. And this is a little closer view. And you can see what's happening on each of those little, um, well, we're gonna call them leaves but they have these little seeds on them and notice that there are some areas that are darker and some lighter and we'll be putting in those highlights to give them more definition but I want you to always remember these are paintings we're working on they do not have to completely imitate a photograph in fact sometimes you have to use a little creative license to um, to make them look the way you want them to look. And you have to move objects around in your painting sometimes to create the kind of composition that you want. So I'm um, mixing up a little more paint. Now this is an extension of one of these grasses and I'm just going to broaden it a little bit to give it more definition. Defining those a little bit more. 
painting still has some wet places on it. So I'm having to be careful. And remember that objects that are further away are smaller. So we're going to kind of assume that one is a little bit further back. And it also needs to be lighter. And you can have as many or as few of these as you would like. Now here you're seeing one thing that happens when you get too much paint, I mean, excuse me, too much thinner, but you can go through there and pick up some of that and sort of um, diminish it a little bit. But this is all going to be pretty busy in here but it still has a pattern. Okay, I'm going to go back with my finer brush to create a few of more few more of these stems. And if you're not comfortable doing this in the beginning, then it's certainly okay to limit your number. Because each patch is going to be slightly different too. I'm going to put a lot more grass in there. But it may not be right now. I'm going to fill in this place, these places a little bit more also. while I have my paint mixed up. Notice that I'm using some straighter strokes But even in varying your strokes, you can develop patterns by continuing with the same circular motion. So you just kind of have to decide how that's going to look. And it might be better to err on the, the side of fewer in the beginning. And sometimes when I make a mark, or sometimes I should say when I touch the canvas, if it's too light, it doesn't even make a mark, but that's okay. You just keep doing it until you feel comfortable with it. And because we're working with oils, if you don't like one of the strokes that you make, just go right ahead and wipe it out. And then maybe you'll need to use some turpentine to um, completely get rid of it. I 
And some of these strokes are half strokes, and that's okay because there are so many strokes in here, the eye is not going to say to you, oh, I see 20 strokes that aren't real, real marsh grass. They're not even attached to anything, and that's okay too. But if it bothers you, don't do it. And one thing I would tell you about using this uh, very long hair fine brush is that this is good for sea oats that are sort of in the distance. But as they get closer to you, they really need to be a little bit, a little bit more noticeable. switch back to my shorter script brush to do some more tops on my sea oats. And it's okay to extend them and that one was a little bit longer it should have been the top, so I'm just going to um, make it the bottom. This one I'm going to have standing up somewhat, so it's actually going to have some sea pods or some seed pods on either side so I think that's going to be my last one. Now another thing that you can do at this point uh, is put some of the some of the leaves well I call them leaves I don't know what they actually are but they have little um, little parts that come out of them and that was too much turpentine. Okay, and I'm gonna start down here and just pull that out and let it fly someplace. Since the wind is blowing a little bit, then it's okay to do that. Okay. Also makes a nice filler in this area. It'll give a little more interest to this one. Some circling around. Okay. 
And once this dries, which won't be long, I'm going to go back and do some highlights and shadows, which will give these a little bit more depth. Uh, let me tell you, while I have my paint mixed up, I'm going to use one of my scruffy bristle brush brushes, or I could use my worn out fan brush, which I've used on other occasions for trees and for some of this grass down here. Um, using my darker mixture of green and loading my paint brush pretty significantly. I'm going to go in here and create some some heavier marks. And again, a caution about these fan brushes. Um, if you do too much of that with a more rounded brush than mine is, you will end up with a lot of irregular, irregular in the sense that you don't see that shape in nature very often. I'm establishing some edges here. And I need to have a little bit thicker paint to do that with. And this is a good time to start thinking about that simply because when we start working down here, we're not going to want to go back and try to make any changes up here. I'm filling in the thickness of these sea oats, but I don't want it to be real solid. It does need to be darker than I'm getting it. I'm either using a corner of this brush or I'm turning it on its side and still using the corner of the brush. Don't want those to be specky. Okay, I need to diminish these blue places. I'm just not getting enough paint on my brush. So I'm mixing up some more paint over here. 
going to wipe out my brush so it doesn't have too much medium in it. And this is another example of the fact that you need a little medium, but too much medium is going to spoil the soup. Okay, so you just press and pull. Okay, let's call it a day, and we'll go back in the next session when this is all dry, where I can move around with my hands without getting them painted. So we'll be back. Um, happy painting. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment boxes below, and please like share and comment as well as subscribe to my channel thank you so much and um, let me bring you back to reality here and see how this is looking in the, the scheme of things okay so long for now